In this video, I'm going to talk about tension forces. Now, let's imagine we suspend something from a cable or a rope, or in this case, a set of earphones from its cords. Now, these headphones have a weight. It's going to be a downward gravitational force, but they're not falling, they're just hanging there. Therefore, there must be an equal and opposite upward force, and that force is the tension force, in this case, in the headphone cables. And just like we saw for the force when sitting on a chair, the normal force, this force is very variable. Right now, it's supplying exactly enough force to balance the mg of the headphones. If I push down on the headphones, now the downward force is more, so there must be a big upward force. So somehow the tension has beautifully adjusted to give the upward force. Likewise, if I partially reduce the weight, now the downward force is less, and somehow the tension force here has also reduced by just the right amount to keep it where it is. So how does it do it? Well, just like with the normal forces, you have to regard the cable as being something like a spring. So when you push down and increase the downward force, the spring stretches. You can kind of see that here. Um, it may stretch by a very small amount because essentially the spring constant may be very, very large. But nonetheless, it stretches and therefore applies more force until it balances your downward force. Likewise, if you reduce the weight, the spring stretches by less and produces a smaller force. So how do you work out the tension force? Well, we do it the same way we saw for normal forces. You could in principle work out how much everything is stretched in the spring constant, but usually that's too hard. Usually what we do is we simply say, what force does it need to supply to keep whatever is hanging from the cable stationary? Okay, let's do a worked example. Let's imagine we have some weight M suspended from two cables at different angles from a roof. Um, let's say we have angle theta 1 here and theta 2 there. Let's work out what the tensions are going here, what's going to model the whole situation. Now if we do a free body diagram, we're going to have tension 1 along the first rope, tension 2 along the second rope, and a weight mg downwards. Now, because it's not accelerating, then everything must balance, so there must be no net force. And that means no net vector force. Uh, the forces must balance in every direction, because it's not accelerating sideways or upwards and downwards. As we're going to deal with vectors, we better define some axes. So let's have x in that direction and y in this direction. Okay, so we need to balance the forces. Now the weight points in the minus y direction, so the net force is going to be is going to be the mg in the minus y direction. Now what's the force from tension number one. It's going to have a component along here in the minus x direction and a component along there in the plus y direction. And by trigonometry we find that the component in this one, so the minus x component is minus t1 cos theta1 minus x direction. And then we've got a plus t1 sine theta1 in the plus y direction. And we can similarly break up tension 2. It's going to have a component along here and a component upwards. And the component along here is going to be plus t2 cos theta2 in the plus x direction. And we're going to get a plus t2 sine theta2 in the plus y direction. Okay, and that must all equal zero because it's not accelerating in any direction. Because it's not accelerating in any direction, that means that both the x components and the y components must sum to zero. So if we just combine all the y components, so so 
So y components, we've got minus mg plus t1 sine theta1 plus t2, t2 sine theta2 must equal 0. And if you look at the x components, go through here looking for things with an x, we've got minus t1 cos theta1 plus t2 cos theta2 equals 0. So we have two unknowns, t1 and t2, and we have two equations. Therefore, we can solve all this. So how do we solve all this? Well, it's normal simultaneous linear equations. Um, everyone has their own favorite way of doing this. I might take this equation to begin with and rearrange it. We'll find that t1 equals t2. Um, I should mention all these t's here are now just the magnitudes, so they should technically have positions like this. That's often a bit painful to write, but when I just write it without the um, without a vector sign, that just means it's the magnitude. So the magnitude of t1 equals the magnitude of t2, which is what's up here, times cos theta2 over cos theta 1. And we can substitute that back into here, um, which allows us to solve, and we find that the mod of t2 is equal to mg cos theta 1 over cos theta 2 sine theta 1 plus cos theta 1 sine theta 2. And we substitute that back in to this equation. We find a similar equation for the tension in 1. Now let's check all this. First of all, uh, we can check units. This is a tension, which is a force. All the cos and sines are ratios, so they have no units. It's just mg, which is also a force. So the units balance in both these things. We can check function plausibility. Um, if the mass is zero, the tensions are both zero, so that makes sense. We can also look at the angles. Let's say that theta 1 was 90 degrees and theta 2 was zero. That means it would be hanging straight from cable 1. So if theta 1 is 90 degrees, then this is cos of 0, so tension 2 goes to 0, and tension 1 is just going to be, that's 1, uh, cos mg, and this is going to be, um, give us 1 as well. So that just tells us that the tension 1 is mg. So that all works. So this looks plausible.